but he was killed essentially by, I think, somebody like Blackwater, right? I wouldn't say that. I'm continuing my research in that area. But I think that the even the evidence that's in Family of Secrets, and there are four chapters just on the Kennedy assassination. That, and people would say, well, you, that's a book about the Bush family and, uh, you know, their influence and where they came from and what was really going on. Actually, what it is is it's a series of endless revelations from my research, one of which is in relation to my discovering that George H.W. Bush claimed he couldn't remember where he was when Kennedy was shot in, in November 1963. And I, I became so interested in that, and I thought, well, let me just find out where he was. And that led me into years of research on both him uh, and the Kennedy assassination. And so these chapters are all really they're a microcosm of the Kennedy assassination related to the Bush family circle. And when you see that and you learn that George H.W. Bush was in CIA, not just in 1976 as, as the outsider who was appointed director purportedly, but that he was actually an insider, that he'd been in CIA all those years, that he was in, he was in CIA in 1963 Yale, in Texas when he couldn't remember where he was. And so then you begin to see that, no, that's not Blackwater. That's, that's Yale. That's, that's Banks. That's uh, uh, giant general dynamics that have contracts at stake and they're huge investigations of graft and fraud. And people are going to go to jail uh, unless prosecutions are stopped. But wasn't he living in Texas at the time? He was a Texan. That's right. Midland? I mean, so. He... Well, he was living in Houston, but he was a candidate for the U.S. Senate and was on the road in Dallas and other places at the time campaigning against Kennedy. So, of course, that's a tantalizing thing about where was he and why did he claim he didn't remember. And the answer takes us down this rabbit's hole. What I want to emphasize, I think this is important, is that I am not a person who carries very strong uh, theories and certainties about why thing, particular things happen and who did it or something like that. I'm not that kind of person. I'm very much of a serious investigative reporter where I go into every story fresh again with the idea. So, for example, I won't buy it that because I heard that George Bush is dumb, that he's actually necessarily dumb. I want to see the evidence. And now, Richard Nixon was in Dallas the day before. Yeah, he was there that day, actually, and he lied about it. He actually lied about it to the FBI. He said he had left several days before, but he, he didn't. He left several hours hours before. Could an argument be made that there's the Academy Awards, you suddenly find, oh my God, Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg are in the same room. Is there a conspiracy? Why were they all, well, it was the Academy Awards. How big an event was John Kennedy coming to Dallas? I would think Kennedy coming to Dallas was a big thing and that a lot of people showed up for it because... It was kind of like a convention of opportunists? No, it actually was not a big thing. It was only a big thing in the sense that certain people who I believe were setting up the scenario, this is again a classic intel thing that people like Howard Hunt and David Atlee Phillips, they had done the same thing. In Who's Gu David Atlee Phillips? Oh, these are top CIA operatives. Uh, they had done the same things in Guatemala and in Iran and in later, you know, in Chile and so on. This is what they do. They go and they lay the groundwork. And so the whole idea is that PSYOPs, it's all what the public thinks. PSYOPs plays an enormous role in everything. It's the say it's what it's, is psyop? It's psychological operations. It's directly related to advertising and public relations, which are how do you manipulate people to perceive things in a way that is favorable to you. And that's what politics is. That's what entertainment is. That's what almost everything is. You're, you're channeling people toward a desired result. And so in Dallas, what, there were a number of factions and things going on, but there were desired results. One of them was that the people should conclude uh, that Kennedy was actually in a place where there were lots of people who hated him, that it was a dangerous milieu just in general. This is part of this thing of presidents. In the history of the United States, many presidents have been shot or attempt, there have been attempted shootings, dozens and dozens of them, uh, as recently as a man shooting into the Obama White House, uh, several shootings at Gerald Ford, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people don't know how many of these there are. And we are told that all of them, all of them, 100 percent, were by crazy people. Now, given the fact that the United States itself sponsors non-crazy people doing the exact same thing to remove or kill leaders elsewhere, how logical is that? Statistically, it's a total impossibility. Right. It doesn't make any sense. 
And so as a serious thinking person, you have to be open to the idea that somebody is dis- deliberately misleading you into thinking that 100% of these things are, are nuts or loners. Now, as far as Dallas goes, they were creating a milieu with that ad, that big black bordered ad in the Dallas Morning News that morning that was kind of a, a, a threat to Kennedy. And it had a bunch of signed names on there, a bunch of Jewish names, which was crazy because, of course, Jews didn't hate Kennedy. But by... Uh, people, the, the people who actually were behind the ad were people who thought, you know, well, let's let's blame it on the Jews, you know, mm-hmm. and and this is all psyops. Well, he did get shot in the temple. <laughs> That's an old joke. Oh, I think about Lincoln getting uh, shot in the temple. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's just going for a joke. Yeah. Well, why not?